a lot of people linked me this video. This guy got kicked out of volunteering at a cancer hospital. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I just wanted to check in with you and have a little talk and thank everyone who has recently subscribed. So for everyone who has mm -hmm. recently joined the channel, thank you very Concord much for hospital? coming to hang out. No, I really appreciate that you were here. Thank you for your support. Today I just wanted to talk about what's up with my channel and what I'm doing online. I know a lot of people have seen uh, some of my speeches that I've done recently at yeah. industry level yeah. for the game industry. And I just want to let you know, I don't like doing those. That is not something that I really want to do. I just want to make video games. I want to make cool things for people. Sure. I want to make fun games. And in between that, while I'm making my games, maybe I'll make some fun mm -hmm. and interesting videos here and there for people to have a laugh at. Imagine that. I don't like doing industry speeches because we are mm -hmm. addressing topics that can be quite difficult to address and it will earn me enemies. I don't think that this kind of stuff is difficult to talk about at all. I think the reason why it becomes difficult is because some people it's difficult for them to control their emotions. And I do resent the fact that we consider some conversations difficult to have because of the lack of emotional uh, control that a small handful of people are allowed to uh, express. Yeah, it's very weird. There, because like I don't really see the problem talking about something like this. It's not a big deal. Why well, get upset? Yeah, they make it difficult. And I understand that, and I've accepted that. So why I don't want mm -hmm. to do these speeches is that, unfortunately, yeah. there is negativity involved in what you have to say. But when someone does something wrong, you have to point it out. Sure. And if you don't, you just have things more wrong can snowball things out of control yeah, exactly. into catastrophic levels. I don't want to do these speeches. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to do these speeches. I don't care about the clicks or the views. But I'm doing this not because I want to or need to, but because I choose to. And I choose to stick up for gamers and developers who feel like they are not being heard, that their voices are being ignored by the games industry. I think it's even worse than being ignored. It's that your voice is not being ignored. It's being misunderstood intentionally and then twisted into something that it wasn't. So that is why I'm doing these industry speeches. Yeah, if it was only ignored, I it would be fine. I am a solo developer. I run my own studio. Mm -hmm. I make my own games. I make exactly what I want. For better or worse, even if I don't yeah. have a huge audience, even if my games don't have mass appeal, that's all right by me. I like to explore sometimes weird ideas. Sometimes they don't always land, but I'm having a lot of fun with what I'm making. All my passion and heart goes into what I make, and I'm able to make games that people can enjoy. So for everyone that has been enjoying my games and has appreciated what I've done, I am so grateful to you guys for enjoying my games and supporting me. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Somebody in chat is uh, upset about this. You've been typing a lot, man. You got a lot of opinions about this. Okay, so you're you don't like the way he acts and the way he talks on camera and you think that he's fake. Okay. In the past, I've worked in the photography and the photo just, marketing industry. Just a shit talking retard. There's no reason to even address it. He's 12 years old. Yeah. And I saw yeah. the industry Mm -hmm. and its giants rise, and I saw them sure. fall. I saw all of the elements that went into a catastrophic failure for those industries, and at that... Yeah, it's super common. It happens all the time. This is the problem. You ban them for having an opinion? I do. I ban people for just being hostile and vitriolic and rude for with no reason and no explanation other than I don't like this person, it's annoying and obnoxious. Like, it's one thing to type something out and say, like, okay, I don't like this person, right, or whatever. But, like, for you to go on and, like, start making a bunch of bullshit up and say, like, oh, this person's fake. He's doing this on purpose. He doesn't really think this. How, you don't even know them. Like, what are you talking? Like, why are you even talking like this? What are you thinking? Right? And it's, like, the kind of people that act and think like that are... There's, like, a very, like, there's a type of, like, it's, like, a... uh like a type of species on Twitch 
that is constantly trying to root out inauthenticity. And I think this is really, I, I think this is like the most, the, the biggest like loser contingency of Twitch users. And the reason why is because they think that they can perceive authenticity through a camera. You can't. As, speaking as somebody who knows many streamers and many people behind camera, the public does not have the ability to discern what is and is not authentic. You think that you do because of confirmation bias. But a lot of like that group of people, they are like, and, and I think also like another reason it's body language. Yeah, but there's a reason why body language isn't used in court. The reason why is because it's not verifiable. Dunning Krugerangers, yeah, exactly. And, and so there's a huge contingency of people on the internet that are like constantly fixating on trying to, uh, uh, and I have no problem if you want to say somebody's doing something that, that that's fake for views, but like you have to have a reason for it, right? You have to have some sort of justification for why you're saying this. Like I have no problem with an accusation like that, but for you to just say this is what's happening is retarded. And especially when you're spamming, spamming, spamming about this. Like, it's one thing, like, yeah, it's just that you, you can lie with body language. No, you, yeah, you can lie with body language. You can use body language to identify lies. All of these things are percentages of probabilities. Like, maybe this is the case. Maybe it's not. Darren's saying this is fake, and I just feel uh, it, like it's fake. Anytime that people, as I said, I think it is internet autism that people think that they can determine whether something is fake by watching some person act on camera or not. You can't tell. You don't know. And I'm telling you this as somebody who knows these people behind camera, not this one specifically, but just in general. What the public's perception of different people on the internet is, is not reality. Even though they think it is. They don't know what they're talking about. point I was working with industry veterans and I was new they threw me into the deep end to see mm -hmm. if I would sink or swim they wanted to see what I would do in a professional uh -huh. environment and I learned from the very best and unfortunately I lacked the experience the wisdom and the confidence to do anything about the things yeah. that I saw going wrong so what happened in the photography and photo marketing industry is people exactly mm -hmm like Kathleen Kennedy came in into CEO roles and upper management and they destroyed everything. And I couldn't understand it at the time. I didn't have enough yeah. experience and insight. And I understand now that this movement that we have been seeing over the past few years that they call feminism is not feminism. The only mm -hmm. thing that I can describe it is neo-feminism. It is not about equality. It is about superiority and i will get back to that topic uh, later on in the video but basically these people enter spaces where they don't really have actual interest in they just want control and mm -hmm. a sense of power and they want people nope. who have who echo the same ideological and political views and agendas as them people that will echo them They'll tear down anyone who doesn't agree with them and put in those people. Yeah, people, he's completely right. Even if those people are ill-suited to the roles in which... That's they... exactly what happens. Yeah, it's because these people think that their ideology makes them... The, the problem is the emotional elevation of ideology. And people think that their ideology is them literally fighting against like genocide or some sort of like crazy like emotional uh, like fixation. And I think what happens is that they get so emotionally fixated on it that then they view anybody who disagrees with them as like literally a Nazi, right? It's yeah, they they turn their opinions into the fight between good and evil. And I think when you do that, it becomes a lot easier to dehumanize another person and to treat them extremely badly. They are working. And people like Kathleen Kennedy mm -hmm. destroyed the photography and the photo marketing industry. I watched companies that seemed like they were too big to fail be utterly destroyed 
by people you know, like who Ubisoft. came in not because they cared about the work, not because they cared about the industry. Oh, this, yeah. They didn't care about the consumer or the end product. They only cared about their own ego and taking control and assuming power. And that will this is the same with everything like this isn't anything that's unique with like any political ideology this is just the way that people are he's right roy industries and that is why i'm speaking up for the games industry because what i watched firsthand right in front of me happen to photography companies and in the yeah. photo marketing industry that is happening right now in the games industry and i can clearly see with my own eyes i can very clearly see it mm -hmm. we're going to have a disaster on our hands in the game industry but I know that there is still time. If we all work together, we absolutely- I don't think that it's really gonna be a disaster in a lot of cases. I think what ends up happening is that there's always gonna be time for a market correction because you're already seeing a lot of these types of games get like, there's no way that the executives aren't seeing the failures of games like Concord or Forspoken that are like massively heavily invested games. Uh, and and not learning a lesson from that. It's very obvious that companies are learning lessons from this. And also, if the companies don't want to learn the lesson, then they can make whatever they want to make, but people just aren't going to play it. And I think that's what's really happened. Or scrambling? Yeah, exactly. Indie games are doing better than ever. Well, indie games are, and that's the thing, right? Is that more and more the barrier to entry for making video games is becoming lower. And the barrier to um, publishing video games and to distribution of video games is like extremely low. Think about how hard it would be to get everybody to play your game in 1995 or in 2005. But now you have Steam, you have these indie games, you have these tools. Like you have so many tools and like opportunities for mass distribution that were just not available anymore or not available back then. And now they are. And so now if you don't like the kind of game like that is, We've had other big games fail hard before Concord. Yeah, yeah, sure. But things take a long time for them to change. We can put the ship yeah. back on the right direction. Mm -hmm. So, with my games, they all have been quite small over the past years. And I appreciate everyone who's been understanding and been supporting and cheering on my games. Lately, sure. I've just been um, planning and working mm -hmm. on very small games, stuff that I can make in a short amount of time and that I can ship so I can keep paying my bills. Yeah. Generally, I try to aim probably more than, than what I'm currently capable of, but that is part of my personal endeavor to continue pushing myself to keep improving, to keep getting better, and to make better games than I did previously. I just want to keep improving. But lately, my games have been quite small. Mm -hmm. I don't talk a lot about my personal life because that's not really why we're here. So the reason why a lot of my games, or all my games, are quite small right now is over the past year, I've been volunteering at a local cancel hospital. Okay, here we go. And I've been playing music. Just, I've been going to the hospital with a fiddle, and I sit in the sort of the public area, and I just play, you know, traditional music, just something that's mm -hmm. easy to listen to, something calming, something to cheer people up. And the staff come to me throughout the day, and they're so grateful that at least I was able to brighten up their day even a little bit. People that are receiving treatments will often come down from their rooms. You have to, to admit that, like, this is, it, it's, it's really fucking funny that this guy who's volunteering at a cancer hospital playing a fiddle for the people with cancer is somehow been kicked out of volunteering for the cancer hospital because of his opinions that he has about video games or something like it, it's really when you, when you take a step back and you really think about how retarded that is it's really kind of impressive it some, is it's amazing they'll thank me for you know sharing some music with them and it friends so and silly family who yeah, are I know. visiting and supporting their loved ones going through treatments have thanked me for that. And I don't receive any money for that. I don't brag about it. Mm -hmm. And I, I do it because I understand what it feels like to stare down the barrel of a gun that's aimed at someone else. And you feel utterly powerless and helpless to help someone. One thing that I find as I grow older and older is I feel increasingly frustrated understanding how little I can actually do for other people. I wish that there was more that I could do to help people. I wish there was something I could do to make people's lives better. 
and the older you get, the more you realize... Yeah, I feel like that that's something that a lot of people get, deal with. Like, for me especially, like, there's a lot of people that ask me for help with stuff. Like, it, it, it's it's a lot. And I do try to I try to help people, right? I do. But, man, it, 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 can, be, it can be a lot. How little you are capable of when it comes yeah. to that. And so this is something that I can do. Yes, it takes a... Mm -hmm certain amount of time away from my work schedule it takes a certain amount of my focus away i should be entirely focused on my work on my career yeah, on sure. advancing my studio and making more games but i've chosen this i have chosen to spend time at the cancer hospital because even if it's just a little bit at least i can help someone see that there is hope mm -hmm. that there can be light at the end of the tunnel and we all know how these things go. Cancer treatments don't always work out. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And it's the fear of not knowing. It's wondering if you're ever going to get to see your loved ones again. It's knowing that they probably only have until the end of the year. Oh, jeez. And it breaks my heart that people that live on Twitter that don't spend any time in the real world... Here we go. ...are now infesting all these different industries like movies yep. and TV and video games uh -huh. they don't have this kind of understanding of the world they don't have compassion for other people no they don't they don't they they and this is really the the truth is that a lot of people are extremely vengeful and angry and vitriolic and what they do uh is that they look for somebody that they can use as an outlet for that vitriol that is an acceptable target so, like, as soon as they find somebody who they can dehumanize enough to where they can justify treating them really badly, this is when they're really... They, they, that That's what it's all about, right? And, like, so this is one thing that I, I generally believe is that if you want to figure out why a person does something, figure out what they're getting out of it. And if you can figure out what they're getting out of something, it all makes sense. And I think in this circumstance, a lot of people love the privilege, the moral privilege of being able to effectively curb stomp somebody in the name of, um, you know, being being the good guy effectively. Right. Like you want to figure out a way to be the good person for justice. Right. Exactly. It's a power trip. Yes. All they care about is themselves and they do forcing their political views on people. And then they cry and get angry when there's any sort of criticism. Well, it's not about their political views. The political views are simply a vehicle to uh, t t to hold their ego. So, like, a lot of these people, like, they, they have these political views, sure. But, like, in many cases with people like this that I've known more personally, they're actually very domineering and aggressive and disagreeable about everything. And I think that it's like kind of, you know, like which came first, the chicken or the egg. And these people, this is simply a manifestation of this personality. And there's no it's really about power and control and making themselves look good as a person to become a better human mm -hmm. being. They've closed themselves off to that. And it just breaks my heart. Because one day they will be in a position in their lives where they'll. They'll need that experience and those skills to be able to to handle what's coming their way and they won't have that well that's when they uh that's when they delete their account and they put it on protected and yeah it's these people and also like they don't have any of these skills because a lot of these people are like weird losers and it the thing is that if you were able to look at and review the lives of the people that have these really strong opinions on the internet you would realize that they're worth pretty much nothing uh, these are people that aren't successful. Uh, they're weirdos. They don't know how to act around other people. Like, as I've said, I think that the... How many of you guys know people that are like this in your personal life? And you've been able to watch them grow up and get older. And in school, they were disagreeable, annoying. People didn't like them. And then they have evolved into this. Because that's what I've discovered. That's what I've observed myself. Yeah, it's in mirror. Exactly. Yeah. And so I just want to share with you my personal frustration and mm -hmm. that I've lost my opportunity to volunteer 
at the cancer hospital. Why? And the reason why I've lost that opportunity okay, here we go. is because people from that woke community, the neo-feminists who do not care about anything but taking control at all costs. They want control. They want power. They want to tear down men. They entered the sort of the arrangement at the hospital and mm -hmm. they wanted to have a tight control over everything. And anyone who did not bend the knee, they bullied and pushed out. And so I had been volunteering at the cancer hospital for about a year. And then these woke neo-feminists came in and assumed control and exerted their power in a way that made the environment unpleasant and unmanageable. And Fuck. so I was pushed out of that environment because I would not bend the knee to these neo-feminists who the internet would describe as woke. But it's, it's more than just woke. It's neo-feminism, and it's not about them fighting for equality. It's them fighting for superiority and control. They don't... I think this is a huge problem. Um, and I don't think it's a, it's a feminist uh, exclusive problem. I think that guys have this happen too. Uh, it's hard to really know exactly what happened, right? Because he's talking in such abstract terms. Um, but what I've noticed a lot of, and like I remember uh, a really good example of this is, remember when I was watching that video of the Taliban telling women that they couldn't talk in public anymore? There was a huge amount of, um, there were a huge amount of like comments in a chat from, I would assume, guys that were spamming based for the Taliban, right? Like, they were super, super happy about it. And I think that what's happened is that as people and, like, genders have been more and more radicalized to become, like, you know, uh, distrustful of each other, what's ended up happening is that you have these groups of people. It's like you don't really hate, like, with these women, right? You don't hate men. You hate your ex-boyfriend or you hate your dad. And like with guys, it's like you don't really hate women. You're just mad your mom treats you this way or you're mad that your last girlfriend cheated on you. And so I think that there's all these times where people are effectively adopting ideologies in order to cope with personal trauma. And I think that's what happens with, you know, like any sort of extreme feminism, any like red pill stuff, anything like this. Because if you're actively going out and trying to like suppress another group of people, you now are the aggressor they're projecting yeah they are and i think that's what happens is that people use these ideologies as a vehicle for them to express and work through their own personal unresolved trauma and i see this all the time care about the damage that they cause to the world around them and i am upset mm -hmm. not for myself but for the people that i was able to help even a little bit, to bring a little bit of brightness to their day, I no longer can do that at that, in that environment. The other day I had a disturbing conversation with a lady whom okay, I previously go. had a lot of respect for. Yeah. And I was explaining my views that all people are equal. It doesn't matter what your gender is. It doesn't matter what you call yourself with your pronouns. Everyone is equal. Everyone should have an equal opportunity in the workplace. Yeah, of course. And she laughed in my face and she said, well, you're wrong. And I was shocked. I thought she was joking. So I yeah. froze. And I said, excuse me? I said, Every everyone is equal. It doesn't matter if you're a male or female, if you're the right person for the job, you should have that job. And she laughed and said, you're wrong. And she said, her reasoning is for too long, men okay. have been in control and we need to fix it. Right. And by saying we need to fix it, that means you are saying that something is broken. Well, it, it's just, again, and, and I can guarantee you that, you know, assuming all this is true and this is what's happened. I mean, like, I've seen, I like, is it really hard for us to believe this? I, I feel like I've heard plenty of people talk like this. Yeah, this sounds like bad fan fiction. I'm not going to lie. What do you mean? Like, I see people talking like this all the time on Twitter. Yeah, it's extremely common. To say that, like, this is not common is nuts. Heard this at my job? Yeah. Yeah, people, what, what they do, right? You just get, yeah, I, I think that if you really knew who this person was and you knew everything about their life, you'd probably know that there's a reason why they think this way. Some feminists now believe that uh, it's men's turn, time to suffer. Yeah, I think so. I think that, and this is basically what happens, right? Is there's like a certain subset of like hyper-toxic feminism 
that fixates around making men live out the oppression or the bad experience that these women believe that women used to live out. That's basically what happens. And I see this very regularly. I had brought up the topic of how mm -hmm. Ubisoft had a mentorship program that explicitly excluded yeah. males. Oh yeah, I saw that. And I said, how is it fair that young men who want to have opportunities mm -hmm. to work in this space, that is being taken away from them? Why? How is it fair that there are now organizations that are funding and companies that are hiring based on gender and excluding males? What am I supposed to tell young men who want to have an equal opportunity to work in those career fields. Am I supposed to tell young men that they are inferior to someone else because of the way they were born? Well, they're just offered less opportunities. It's not even being inferior. And the ironic thing is that the implication of needing mentorship programs for just women and non-binary people, which is what he was talking about, implies that they're the ones that are inferior, right? Because they need this extra help. Uh, so I, I find this to be very problematic. I, I do. And I, I feel like it's actually just such a extremely easy way to look at the world, right? It's that if you're treating a person differently because of something that they don't have control over, like their gender or their race, you're doing something that's bad. It's bad to do that. Like, I, I, I feel like it's such a simple concept that nowadays seems to be lost, yeah, why is it so hard to be human to them? Well, the reason why is that, as I said before, um, if you really knew who these people were and you knew enough about their personal life, you could probably understand exactly why they have the viewpoints that they do. It's the same as like how, you, you know how like, it's, this is like kind of a pretty simple example, right? Where like a lot of college students are in favor of student debt forgiveness and a lot of people that are millionaires are conservative. It's because most people's political views and most people's ideology just reflects what's in their own best interest. It's not really something that's arrived at by a principle or by any sort of ethical or moral investigation. It's something that's arrived at from working backwards from what is beneficial for me and how can I make this seem like this is the way the world should be. And that's the way that most people have worldviews. That's the way that most people think. And so when you see a bunch of women or people getting together and making opportunities for other women, well, that's because they're doing it in benefit of themselves. That's the reason why. It's that simple. It's the same reason why people are celebrating the Taliban being the fucking Taliban. It's because they view that to be on the same side as them. That's why it happens. And I think also there's a huge problem nowadays that I feel like there is a tremendous amount of, and I don't think this is white guilt. I think this is first world guilt and privilege guilt. And I'm seeing this a lot nowadays where you have people that are fully aware of the in inadequacy and the, um, the like injustice of the world, right? Like, how is it fair that because of spawn RNG, you live in a hundred thousand or a million dollar house and, you know, you can go to a good school, but some other kid, you know, has bad spawn RNG. He's in Africa and now he's in Joseph Coney's child army, right? Definitely not so good. And so people are able to like internalize that and they see that and they realize that they've had a tremendous and by the way we all everybody here is a tremendous beneficiary of privilege we live in a country you speak one of the most spoken languages english uh that is in like the first world countries many many people speak english huge advantage uh you have access to technology you have access to high speed internet like you already have like a tremendous amount of privilege just by the fact that you're here and so a lot of people, when they realize that, and I think this is especially true for like upper middle class people, is that they realize that they have this tremendous amount of privilege and they have a profound amount of guilt because of that. And so what they do is they look for a way that they can nail themselves up on a cross. Because I think that like suffering is part of the core human condition. 
And that's why I think, for example, Catholicism is extremely popular, right? Almost all religions are built around, or at least like Western religions, are built around some component of um, inherent evil. And I think the reason why is that it justifies suffering, and suffering is part of the human condition, and people actually perceive that to be a good thing, and they seek that out. And so it's virtue signaling. It is. It's virtue signaling. But why is it virtue signaling? It's virtue signaling because they are aware they are aware of how privileged they are and how much of a huge opportunity they have. And they can't cope with that because it's not congruent with the way that they see themselves. And I, I understand like this is like a really, really long tangent, but I think that's why it happens. It's because these people are, they are aware and they're not wrong either. It's just that the way that they behave is wrong. Is this resolving anything, though? I think it is. If uh, Understanding what a problem is is very, like, you can't, how can you solve a problem if you don't know what it is? How can you stop something from happening if you don't know why it's happening? Because of their gender, mm -hmm. they deserve less opportunities. Yeah, of course. And they are an inferior person. Yeah, I wonder what her relationship with her dad is. What was her relationship with her last three boyfriends? Because that is what this lady was saying. Let's be real. Right? And eventually she just nodded and shrugged and walked away. And that is what we're dealing with here. These neo-feminists that are mm -hmm. online, they are not people who care about equality. No. They don't care about the damage they're causing. They only care to serve themselves. They want control. They want superiority. They do not want equality. And I've been so disturbed from that conversation because I was utterly disgusted that this was someone that I knew in real life. Mm -hmm. And that they we had this discussion and I said, everyone is equal. And she said, no, you're wrong. Yeah, of course. And this is the mentality that we are harboring and growing on Twitter. And we well, can well, the reason why is it's a bunch of people who are disaffected and angry about the position that they're in. They feel like they've been mistreated, that people don't like them, uh, that the world is out to get them or something like that. And and the thing is that people are not equal. They're not like straight up. Um, there are some people who are just born losers. They're dumb. They're never really going to amount to anything. They're just like, you know, you spawn in and you have a random amount of talent points. Some people have five and some people have 50. That's just the way it is. But treating everybody equally is very different than everybody being equal. And I think this is a big problem that a lot of people don't really understand is that there is an inherent unfairness. Like, and I, I noticed this whenever I was in like school, right? Because like there would be some people that could just never figure out math. And it's like, is, is multiplication really that hard for you? And they just can't figure it out. This is a massive fucking debuff. Like, think about how bad your life must be. Like, this is going to fuck you up for the rest of your life. Yeah, share the same brain. So, yeah, exactly. And so, like, that's just the position they're in. I don't trust people who can't understand math. Well, they can't trust themselves. And so what I'm saying is that, like, People are not equal, but they need to be treated equal. That's the difference. Not allow that evil to spread any further because that is what it is. To claim that someone else is inferior because of their gender, because of the way they were born, is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. That is evil. And we can no longer abide by that. It's not that they, no, the problem, and, and if you ask the people that think like this, it's not that those people are evil. It's that, um, actually, yeah, it is, like, basically. Never mind. Yeah, it is. Sorry, I, I, I was thinking about multiple things. We can't overcorrect, and we can't fight I, that I, by I saying, oh, women are wrong, women are worse. Yeah. No. And you're Everyone seeing this, too. You're seeing a huge, uh, like, the whole red pill Andrew Tate, like, thing, like, here. I, I, I want to show you guys the Taliban interview. Basically, you said women are banned in Afghanistan. Why is BBC being pretended to care about Afghanistan women? How to save them? I don't know. They didn't take control. They regained what was rightfully theirs. So
so I just want you guys to see that this is something that's manifesting itself all over on the internet. And to be honest with you guys, I, I'm surprised that there weren't more comments like that. Each of these extremes continually fuel each other. They do. Yeah, women need to help themselves. Everything won't work. I feel like the look said more terrorism on the future. Yeah, yeah. And, and so this is what's happened, right? Is like this mutual escalation has happened. And I think the reason why it's happened is because you have people that are mentally ill that are dictating the rules for engagement in real life the way that men and women should act towards each other or like black and white people should act towards each other. And all these people are describing a scenario that they don't truly understand because like, I remember, do you remember the Josh, like, you know who really put it super well is Josh Strife Hayes because somebody asked him, how do you talk to women? And he said, you're thinking of the wrong question. You should think about how do you talk to people? And that's the problem, is that people don't think that way. He's completely fucking right, you know? And by the way, I think he's married, too. So, you know, it seems like it worked. And so that's the right way that you that you act towards people. And uh, it, it th like, that, that type of mentality and that type of thinking isn't really used as often because it doesn't appeal to people who feel like they've been disaffected or disenfranchised by, uh, you know, a culture. Anyway, I can move on. I, 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 have a, I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to say about this. Okay, I'm sorry. It's equal. There is yeah. no argument about that. And I know that by speaking out like this, by creating these industry speeches, I know what the consequences of my actions are. Before I made these speeches, I had to think very carefully. Because as a public speaker, as a presenter, I understand the deeper implications of what you say, how you say it, where you say it, and when you say mm -hmm. it. And I know that I am receiving personal attacks now. My works that I've created, my games are being attacked. Of course. And I know that in the future, I will be review bombed. Anything that I... Yeah, and this uh, happens with me too, right? I mean, like, if I speak out against something, everybody on Twitter is trying to fucking, like, shit on me. They're insulting the way I look, etc., right? This is just the way it is. It's like, yeah, you, you step into the arena and uh, you're going to get dirty. Uh, Publish yeah. Now will be Just negatively review bombed and I will be criticized and mm -hmm. I have accepted that. There's only two things I could have done. I could have kept my mouth shut and done nothing. Well, that's what they want you to do. They want you because like if you if you criticize people's like thinking, like their like political ideology... And this happens too with right wing people too. Like for example, I I've I've had instances where I was like critical of right wing things, and then I had like a huge amount of people that would like mass downvote my videos and like put a bunch of like really negative comments and like be super aggressive towards me. Yeah, it, it it's it's just extremism and zealotry, right? That's it. And the uh, the internet and like social media has like been, as I said, a, a force multiplier for that. Or I could have spoken up for the developers who are caught in this very unfortunate development in the industry who uh -huh. do really believe in what, they wor what they're working on. They really care. They want to make games using their passion and their skills and their art, and they're forced yeah. into these really awful situations. And I want to speak up for gamers so that they understand that they have a voice, that they are being heard, and the industry does need to hear this. And I have accepted the consequences of my action that there will be negative repercussions for me, and I've accepted that. And that's just... That's the right way to look at it, is that a lot of people go and they get upset when other people disagree with them or get mad at them. Like, nowadays, whenever I see people that are mad at me or, like, trying to, like, fucking do whatever, that's just the way it is. I think, like, trying to fa like, face off against reality and, like, getting mad that, like, oh, I can't, why am I being treated this way? This is unfair. This is wrong. Very, very bad way to look at things. Terrible way to look at things. How? Things of course, you're going to have people fighting you. In of course. order to get the ship back on track. Yeah. 
I don't want to keep making these industry speeches and I don't like making them. So I will only speak when it is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. I will do what the industry needs of me and it's not because I want to, but it's because it's what it's, is needed of me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care of yourselves. I just, I want my next video, so just be fun. Yeah, just something I, fun. I don't have I a... I will uh... keep creating the character analysis videos. I think those are a lot of fun. Yeah, those are good. And I'm really enjoying hear from, hearing from all of you. Take care, everyone. I'm going to enjoy a coffee. Be well. So, yeah, uh, a lot of people linked me this video, want me to take a look at it. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I, I think that he's right about a lot of this stuff. And I think that the issue is that there is a handful of people that like inserting themselves and pushing agendas and then using everything to as a vehicle to push that agenda. And they've convinced themselves that so much that this agenda is like the battle between good and evil that they feel completely comfortable dehumanizing and then destroying people who disagree with it. I think this has happened. Uh, it really it's happened throughout all of human history. I think it is a it, I think it's a core human behavior. It's not something that we're going to unlearn. Uh, if people were doing this 100 years ago, people were doing this a thousand years ago, they're doing it 10,000 years ago. And so like and they will probably be doing it a thousand years from now. So uh, I, I think that if you speak out against anything like this, you can absolutely expect to have people hate you. You can expect to have people try to, like, shut you down and to, like, uh, say mean things about you, to threaten you. Like, every single day, I have people threatening to kill me, people telling me I should kill myself, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, and so if you don't want to have that type of reaction, the only way is to get out of the kitchen. Can't stand the heat? Get out of the kitchen. That's the way it is. And it's never going to go away. It's never going to stop. It's never going to let up. People are not going to feel sorry for you. Uh, they're not going to give a shit. And so, and, and again, like this is not, it's not a nice thing to say, right? It, it, it's not nice, but I think it is very true. And I think it's a better way of coping with reality.